Hi, my name is Charles Sinsu Rasfan Msipa. Welcome again to another presentation on uh, complex integration. In this case, we're dealing with the Kochi integral theorem. So, uh, in this case, I'll put an example here, which is an integral of uh, 2z plus 1 over z squared times z plus 1 dz. In this problem, you must be careful with this type of problem because the answer to this problem depends on the type of setting which you are given. Like for example here, what you have here, the first option, you have to solve this problem for curve C, which is equal to the second, so that is minus one, and the radius half. And then the second option, you're going to get a second, so that it is zero, and radius one eight, and lastly, second, so that at um, minus half, radius one. So starting with the first uh, con uh, condition, uh, we notice that you can roughly sketch the circle just to have an idea of what is the position of our poles in this case which is a zero which is repeated and a simple pole minus one so a circle set at minus one you can give us minus one there and the half is uh, there and then this side this is minus half and this is minus um, three halves. So if the circle is radius that, which means it's a circle which roughly runs like that, and the only pole which we have there is uh, minus one. So then we need now to look at our uh, cosintegral formula and then isolate the pole minus one this way then which means we're going to end up with an integral on c 2z plus 1 over z squared over z minus minus 1 dz so my modification of this exp uh, expression to this form and we are trying to get the this form of an integral whereby you can identify z0 is minus 1 and that is f of z. Now if you look at this function, it has got a pole at 0, but 0 is outside this circle, so this function is going to be analytic in and on the curve C. So then integrating according to this formula, we're going to say this is equal to 2 pi i multiplied by the function f of z which is 2z plus 1 over z squared and the value this at z equals 2 minus 1. So what is left now is just to substitute our z by minus 1 and simplify. So in the denominator we'll take 1 because it's minus 1 squared there is going to be minus 2 plus 1 which is going to be minus 1 and then this will end up as minus 2 pi i that is the answer for the first case which is that one now the second case number 2 which I, I'm going to leave it for you to do it yourself diy the then but just to give you a hint, if you look at uh, this circle, say that at the origin and the radius uh, 1 eighth, which means the only pole in the circle is going to be is zero. And in that case, we're going to have uh, a repeated pole where our n plus 1 is equal to 2. So then, you can now see what you're supposed to do here. Uh, uh, as you can see that n is going to be equal to 1, which means according to this formula, you are going to differentiate fz. In this case, our fz is going to be 2z plus 1 over z plus 1. And the any denominator will give z squared, which you can write as z minus 0 all squared. 
So in this way, we're going to have this part, this numerator as our fz, which is analytic in and on this curve, with this small set which got radius one eighth. So now I'm going to proceed and uh, to discuss with you this case. So let's modify this picture. What will be a the circle centered at minus half? A circle centered at a minus half in this case. We've got one there, half, minus half, minus one, one there, half, up in there. And we're told that this circle, this second radius is one. So from here, for half, and half, that's one. And this side, half, and the three halves here, minus three halves here, that would be one. So our circle runs roughly this way. In this case, it's going to include the two poles. So, what we need to do now, we need to remember that uh, since the two poles are in, this integral is going to be equal to the sum of the integral which integrated around a circle there, let's say gamma zero for this pole minus one, and the other one will be a small curve there, gamma one. So the integral along the curve C is going to be the sum of the integral around the small circles enclosing a one pole at a time. Here it was minus one and there it was in that. So now we need to write this integral as integral around gamma zero. In this case our pole around gamma zero is z minus is minus one. Then we're going to have z two z plus one over z squared. Dz plus around gamma one which is well called zero we're going to have our z minus zero. I'm writing this way so that we can make it very clear that the pole is if the pole is z zero equals to zero. That then in the numerator now we're going to have two z plus one over z plus one dz. Again we should note that this function is pole in minus one so around this in and around this, on this scale, it is analytic. And coming here again, this function is um, analytic. This function is analytic in and on this scale. So if we check carefully here, in this side, we've got this version of the integration formula. And then here, our n, our n plus one is equal to two, getting n equals to one. So this function is differentiable one time uh, and its derivative defined inside end of this curve. So which means now we're going to differentiate this function once and evaluate. So what we're going to have, we're going to have two pi i multiplied by two z plus one over z squared evaluated at, minus, at z equals to minus one plus here we're going to have 2 pi i multiplied by the derivative 2z of 2z plus 1 over z plus 1. First derivative, this point of value at z equals to 0. So we can go on and differentiate this using quotient rule. We differentiate this way, square denominator, we get z plus 1. Squared differentiating there, we get 2 brackets z plus 1 minus differentiating in denominator, we've got 1 and minus 2z plus 1. And with, when it's simplifying, we can see that 2z and 2z can simplify. Then we remain with 2 minus 1, which will be 1 over z plus 1 all the way. Now, this is what we're going to evaluate at 0. And you can see if well, this is 0, we actually get 1, which means we are going to get 1 times 2 pi i. Plus, substituting here, we've got 1 again here, and minus 1 numerically like before, then you get equals to minus 2 pi i. Adding up the 2, we see that the, the integral is going to be equals to, to 0. So I will leave this for a while here. I hope you saw that uh, this was 2 pi i multiplied by 1 
the screen up a bit. This was 2 pi i multiplied by 1, and this one was 2 pi i multiplied by minus 1. I'm presently putting those things clearly because I want to do another experiment here. The experiment we're going to do, I'm going to try to approach this via using the residues. In this case, our poles, our poles are zero twice and simple pole minus one. Then what I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do is to try to calculate residues at this post. So let's start by saying residue of f of z at pole minus one, let's say z zero equals to minus one, which is equal to this function multiplied by this factor, which will, and then calculating limit, then we're going to be left with this limit as z is going to minus 1 of 2z plus 1 over z squared. I hope you notice that the function here, let's put the function in, in the box here, the function here is 2z plus 1 over z squared bracket z plus 1. So the calculate residue, remember we need to matter by z minus minus z0 which means we're going to multiply by z plus 1 then this z plus 1 is going to simplify to 1 then we're left with this expression calculating the residue at minus 1 we have here 1 and there minus 2 and that is minus 1 then the next residue is um, residue of fz z equals to 0 and the multiplicity 2 which means using the formula for calculating residue for multiple poles we need to differentiate this uh, after multiplying by z squared, what is left there, we're going to differentiate and uh, differentiate once and evaluate the limit. So I'm going to say limit at z going to zero of the derivative with respect to z of 2z plus 1 over z plus 1, which is something which we already seen. We saw that this gives us a um, the derivative that gave us 1 over z plus 1 all squared. We've already seen that derivative. So evaluating again there, 0, we can see that this gives us 1. So if we come back here, we've got minus 1 there as a residue, and next we've got 1 here and it's residue. So we can say this is equals to 2 pi i, and the brackets what we're left with, we're left with minus 1 plus 1, which confirms our residue theorem. We say the integral of a function with the poles, no matter how many poles are there within the curve, is going to be equal to the sum of residues at the respective poles multiplied by 2 pi i. I hope you can see now how you can uh, approach these problems using either the residue theorem, Cauchy theorem, or even the partial fractions. Was what we want to do here is to attempt to use partial fractions, which I will for now leave it for you to attempt, and that is we take that two z plus one over z squared plus uh, multiply by z plus one. We take it to the form uh, a z plus uh, b z for second time plus c over z plus one. So you can calculate your a b c and then try to integrate this and check if you get the results which you've got here via the quotient integral formula and via the residue theorem. I think you are in a position to get on practicing similar examples from your text and your formula notes. Thank you for listening. And goodbye.